I want to direct your attention to a, a very alarming example of just how extensive the U.S. interferes abroad. I am based in Thailand. Thailand has general elections coming up in May, and things are starting to heat up. And I want to direct your attention to this article that I found by Just Security. And uh, it's got a logo of the U.S. Capitol, just to give you an idea of who we're dealing with. I'll get into that a little bit more in just a moment. But it's by Sirikan Chalun Seli. She is a Thai national. And the article that she wrote is titled, Shut Out of Democracy Summit, Thailand Prepares for May Elections as Restrictive Laws Aim to Silence Youth Activists. She says, as world leaders gather for the Biden administration summit for democracy this week, it is imperative they turn their attention to Thailand, which pointedly was not invited to the summit. The timing is serendipitous. Thailand's next general election is slated for May 14th. It is arguably the most important election in Asia this year, as it could set the tone for democratic rights in the region. It also represents a chance to curb the junta's influence and shift power to the Thai people where it belongs. So she's openly opposed to the current government she wants the opposition to take power that's what she's saying there and of course when she talks about uh, setting the, demo the the tone for democratic rights in the region she actually means u.s influence because that is what this is all about it is about a region that works closely with china and a region the united states would like to transform into a battering ram against china at the very least uh, remove China-friendly governments from power and install U.S. client regimes in their place, who can then roll back all of their cooperation with China and isolate China uh, here in Asia. And uh, at the very end of the article, this is what she says. This is how she ends her piece. The United States and world leaders can and must seize this opportunity to restore democracy in a country that has been backsliding for too long. So she's talking about and she's calling for the United States intervening into the internal political affairs of Thailand. Sili Khan Chalun Seli is a lawyer. If you listen to her speak in Thai or in English, she's constantly referring to the rule of law. Surely she is aware of the UN Charter, its guarantee of political independence for all nations, and the prohibition against political interference in all forms. And yet she is calling for it and calling the U.S. specifically to do this here in Thailand. Democracy is a process of self-determination. So there is no way for the U.S. to intervene, to interfere or interrupt uh, Thailand's internal political affairs without undermining the process of self-determination, not restoring it, not restoring democracy. If I told you Sili Khan Chalun Seli co-founded an organization uh, funded since the first year it existed uh, up until now by the U.S. government, uh, would you be surprised? Yes, indeed, her organization, Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, uh, it's been funded by the U.S. government since its inception in 2014. If you go to the National Endowment for Democracy's official website, their disclosure for Thailand 2014, and this is archived, if you scroll down, you will see Thai Lawyers for Human Rights mentioned by name under the Union for Civil Liberty. Her organization, Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, not only provides free legal counsel for uh, agitators participating in U.S.-backed uh, sedition here in Thailand. Uh, one of their lawyers actually serves as a core leader of the protests. This is Frontline Defenders, uh, a profile featuring Anand Nampa, and they list his affiliation with Thai Lawyers for Human Rights right here. You can find articles like this from Thai Magazine and elsewhere where they detail his role as a core leader of these protests. Getting back to Silicon Chalun uh, Seli herself, if you read some of her background in, in articles like this from the Bangkok Post about a lawyer preparing to defend herself, they talk about how in 2003, she went to the US for a one-year student exchange program in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which she described as a turning point changing her way of thinking. In 2012, she obtained a World Bank Joint Japan Scholarship to study for a master's degree in international human rights law at the University of Essex in England. She returned a year later to work as a legal consultant with the ICJ, where she co-wrote a report 
on enforced disappearances in Thailand. When they say the ICJ, this is what they mean, the International Commission of Jurists. And if you look at who funds them, it's the US State Department, the British government, Canada, the European Union, and convicted financial criminal George Soros's Open Society Foundations. In 2018, uh, Sili Khan went to Washington, D.C. There she was awarded the 2018 International Women of Courage Award. This is the announcement from the U.S. Embassy and Consulate uh, in Thailand website. This is the announcement from the U.S. Department of State's official website. There she is pictured with all of these others uh, with, the at the time, the First Lady of the United States. I want to talk about the U.S. government uh, funding her work. I want to go back to that Bangkok Post article about her preparing to defend herself uh, against charges of sedition, by the way. They admit her organization, Thai Lawyers for Human Rights. It now receives all its funding from international donors, including the EU, Germany, and US-based human rights organizations in the embassies of the UK and Canada. And when they talk about US-based human rights organizations, they mean the National Endowment for Democracy, which is actually a government organization. It was created by the US Congress, is funded and overseen by Congress and also the US State Department. Which brings us back to Just Security, where she published this article. If you go to their website, uh, they're talking about it was founded uh, to promote principled and pragmatic solutions to problems confronting decision makers in the United States. And if you look at the advisors, virtually every person on the advisory board, past and present, uh, was in the U.S. State Department or some other U.S. government agency. And as I was scrolling through this, I noticed Averill Haynes. Uh, Averill Haynes not only was in the U.S. Department of State, she was also in the Central Intelligence Agency. And she, there she oversaw human rights abuses, uh, crimes against humanity, including torture, and a global spanning drone program that was mostly killing civilians. Business Insider in their 2020 article, Biden's pick for US spy chief played a central role in Obama's secretive drone war that resulted in hundreds of civilian deaths. It says Haynes played a key role in the Obama administration's controversial drone program and critics have also zeroed in on her actions related to the Senate Intelligence Committee's torture report. Uh, on torture specifically, it says she recommended Gina Haspel for CIA director, though Haspel has been implicated in the agency's use of torture. Haynes is also remembered for redacting the Senate Intelligence Committee's report on the use of torture and for approving a panel that ultimately decided not to reprimand CIA personnel who spied on the committee's investigators. And then regarding the drone program, it says, as Insider recently reported, there were a total of 563 strikes, primarily by drones, conducted in Pakistan, Somalia, and Yemen during Obama's two terms, according to the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, killing between 384 and 807 civilians. There were 10 times more covert airstrikes as part of the war on terror under Obama than Bush, according to the Bureau, which has tracked U.S. drone strikes for years. And another important thing to remember about the U.S. drone program, a lot of what we know about it comes to us from a whistleblower named Daniel Hale. He revealed this to the public. Um, the U.S. was never going to disclose this to the public, and they were never going to do anything to address it. Uh, and we know that as a fact because even after he revealed it, the U.S. continued operating this horrific drone program. And what happened to Daniel Hale? The U.S. government had him thrown in jail. So this is from the Washington Post 2021. Daniel Hale, who leaked information on U.S. drone warfare, sentenced to 45 months in prison. The article says, Hale's attorneys and advocates argued that the disclosures provided a val valuable public service. Wh who could deny that? Uh, the documents included a report finding that reliance on deadly attacks was undermining intelligence gathering. During one five-month stretch of an operation in Afghanistan, the documents revealed nearly 90% of the people killed were not the intended targets. And what the Washington Post is trying to say is that 90% of the people the U.S. killed with their drones were innocent civilians, men, women, and children who had absolutely nothing to do with terrorism. 
That is who Avril Haines is. That is what she was doing. And she is just one of many people in the US government who are involved in that and who to this day are involved doing that and ensuring no one is held accountable for it. And Avril Haines is one of several people uh, fitting this profile on the advisory board of Just Security that Stilikan Chalun Seli, uh, co-founder of a US government funded organization is writing articles for, and more importantly, Avril Haines involved in torture and mass murder uh, through the use of drones represents a government that Silicon Chalun Seli is asking to intervene in Thailand's internal political affairs and especially and specifically in an upcoming election to ensure democracy is restored, which just means her candidate of choice getting into power. To the unwitting, unsuspecting reader who stumbles across Silicon Chalun Seli's uh, editorial on just security. They may see what they think is a brave young woman fighting for democracy uh, against an evil dictatorship back in her home country of Thailand. But when you scratch under the surface, you realize that she is being funded by and she is in the service of of the US government guilty of the worst crimes against humanity of the 21st century. And their interest in democracy promotion here in Thailand is simply to remove a government obstructing their foreign policy objectives and installing a client regime into power that will serve them. Seli uh, Khan, Chalun Seli, Thai lawyers for human rights and a, a whole army of US government funded fronts are operating here in Thailand in, in an attempt to replicate the sort of regime change and capture that we saw in Ukraine in 2014 or in Taiwan in 2016 uh, or all across the Arab world during the 2011 so-called Arab Spring. It is uh, something that the United States has done repeatedly. It is uh, something the US media has reported on openly. A 2000 article from New York Times about how the US government overthrew the government of Serbia. A 2004 article by The Guardian about how the US government overthrew the governments of Georgia, attempted to do so in Ukraine and Belarus, and also uh, again mentioning Serbia. And here we are in 2023 in the exact same template used by the U.S. government is being used against nations all around the globe, including here in Southeast Asia and uh, this coming May, the Kingdom of Thailand. It's very important that people understand how this all works. It's, on, it's very important that we get ahead of these regime change operations before they even begin unfolding and making their way into the headlines, as we've seen in places like Libya or Syria or even neighboring Myanmar, uh, right to Thailand's west. These operations can degenerate into armed violence and it can consume an entire nation. We'll keep an eye on all of this as the elections near. I'm going to be covering this more and more. Obviously, this is all connected to what is going on in Ukraine, the U.S proxy war against Russia and Ukraine, and it all links to the U.S. confrontation with China, its desire to encircle and contain China and to use nations along its periphery, including nations like Thailand, against China, rather than allowing these nations to pursue their own best interests, which is doing business with China. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description below for other places you can find and follow my work. Uh, check the video description also for all of the links to everything that I referenced in this video. There are also ways there where you can help support my work. I do not monetize my YouTube channel. I never will. If you see an ad pop up, feel free to skip it because it's not helping me out at all. If you do want to support my work, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee and also Patreon. I do not get an annual grant from the National Endowment for Democracy like Thai Lawyers for Human Rights. Uh, so I depend on my audience's generosity and I greatly appreciate that. That is what makes all of this possible. I also greatly appreciate people who share my work with others and get the word out. Thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.